Good morning friends, this is Kuldeep Chaudhary from Indian Health Consultants with another video in a series of videos where we have been talking about the challenges faced by the Indian healthcare industry and the doctors in this country. This video is meant for the entire healthcare community which includes the doctors, nurses, paramedics because if there is a threat to the healthcare industry then the careers of all these people would get affected. But before we start this video, we need to pay homage to Dr. Vandana Das, a young house surgeon in her early 20s who was brutally murdered by a patient whom she was treating. This Kerala story has stunned the entire medical fraternity. Whether this was a case of violence against doctors or was the handiwork of a lunatic or a drug addict in a moment of madness will only be known once the investigations are completed. We mourn the untimely demise of this young doctor and offer our condolences to her family. This doctor who died in the line of duty, may her soul rest in peace. In our past videos, we have talked about the challenges faced by the medical fraternity from the digital disruptors, from the government, from many other sources. Today, the topic of our video is the downward spiraling of the prices of healthcare services in the last two decades. On one hand, there is inflation in the input costs of all the components that go in uh, providing the healthcare services. On the other hand, there is not only stagnation but a downward movement of the prices offered by the government, CGHS and even the insurance companies. Now, this is posing one of the biggest threat to the healthcare industry. If you would like to uh, see the comparison, then we have tried to see how such things have affected other industries. Many of us witnessed the farmers agitation which went on for more than 13 months. They were demanding remunerative prices for their produce. The condition of the healthcare industry is the same. Today the situation is such that many of the sources of uh, which provide patients to the hospitals are not only non-remunerative but are below the cost of providing those services. In India, most of the healthcare is owned by doctors who are extremely busy in providing treatment to their patients and are therefore not having the time at their disposal to look at these aspects the threats which are coming towards their industry which will which is going to affect their future it is our endeavor to provide them complete information and this is where indian health consultants has launched this channel where we say we show the truth about the health care if you haven't subscribed to this channel then kindly do so because you will get to know the entire information about the opportunities as well as the threats coming towards the healthcare industry, the latest news in the industry, the newsmakers and everything. So when I talked about the farmer agitation, many of us in the healthcare industry were also against uh, the agitating farmers because we could not understand their issue. The media and the government was trying to portray it as uh, something which is going to affect the ordinary citizens. This is exactly what happens when it comes to the healthcare industry. The government and the media both pit us against those citizens and try to divide, uh, you know, draw a wedge between the two by telling them that if better pricing is given to the healthcare industry then it is inimical to your interest which is not the case look at the case of farmers they are demanding a minimum support price and based on their cost of production which if given let's say currently the farmers are being given around 2000 rupees for 100 kilograms which is 20 rupees for 1 kg of wheat while most of us when we buy flour from uh, the malls and the big companies pay almost 45 rupees for the same stuff. Now, if the farmers are demanding a price of 3000 rupees, what difference will it make to the end consumer who is already buying it at 45 rupees? What it will do is it will shrink the massive profits which the intermediaries are earning. The same is the case of healthcare. In our case, the intermediaries are the big businesses the big business owned insurance companies who are now looking at squeezing the market 
by bringing in a unified portal and mark my words within six months to a year's time all the 30 35 insurance companies are planning to join hands and bring down the prices which they are currently given to various hospitals to the levels of ayushman or the cghs rates they get a collect a premium of almost 75 to 80 thousand crores per year and they have estimated that if the rates give offered to the various hospitals are brought down to the levels of ayushman their total expenditure in the year would not be more than 30,000 crores. Thereby, they will earn a huge profit of almost 50 to 55,000 crores. And do you think they are going doing this to bring down the insurance premiums? Absolutely not. In the last year, uh, during the COVID, when the claim ratios increased, they increased the premium rates. Now, this is not, this was once in a 10 years or maybe 15 years or even 50 years kind of pandemic which is already inbuilt when they calculate the premiums. So if the claim ratios in one year have gone up, that doesn't mean that the insurance companies would increase the premium rates. They know it pretty well, but they used the pandemic to increase their profit margins. There are uncanny similarities between the current situation of Indian farmer and the future of Indian healthcare and Indian doctors. I will explain to you how. When India became independent, there was hardly any kind of agriculture. Most of the land was owned by big zamindars who were paying lagan to the Britishers. So when the country became independent, everybody was happy. The farmer was happy. The big land owning zamindars were happy that now they were not, they are not going to be paying lagan to the Britishers and this will improve their condition. Now then uh, Mrs. Indira Gandhi brought about a revolutionary change where Land Sealing Act was introduced and the farmers who were earlier working on those fields became owners of the lands. So these farmers thought that there can be nothing bet better and now they will have a wonderful future. Those, so they started working like donkeys, working 10 to 12 hours and they could foresee that now they will have a better future. Then came the green revolution, irrigation facilities improved, markets were brought to closer to the farmlands where the farmers can sell their produce. And this started showing wonderful results. The farmers' income started rising and they started sending their children to English medium school. Some of the bigger farmers and well-off farmers in lands of Punjab and uh, northern Rajasthan they started sending their children even to the boarding schools in the hill stations. Now this was something which was short-lived. The big business was keeping an eye on the entire scenario. They wanted the entire field to be ploughed by these hard-working people, which took almost 30 years and we came towards the you know, first uh, uh, half, first decade of the 21st century. And that's when the big business started moving in. So they started buying the produce of the farmers and then came the infamous uh, land reforms uh, bills or the farmer bill as we know them, which was an attempt by the big business to usurp the land of the farmers. Now the farmers had been fighting uh, not on such a large scale to get better pricing for their produce, but not in such a big manner. But when this uh, you know last push came, they all united. Now these were very, very small farmers, but they all united because now this was a threat to their existence. And they blocked the uh, you know routes to Delhi and brought the government down on its knees. And the farmers celebrated thinking that they won the big battle. They might have won this, this, is, uh, this battle, but the war is still on and there's very little chance that the farmers can win this war because the war is between the big business which not only controls the government but also the media they can create the narrative and it would be really really uh, you know a herculean task for the farmers to win this war now this is where the situation of the doctors is absolutely the same when the country became independent there was very little health care in the country. Most of the good doctors used to be Britishers, so uh, they all went back to England. 
Now, most of the doctors in India were the traditional uh, Ayurvedic or the traditional Indian system of medicine. India didn't have many allopathic doctors at that point of time. So the government encouraged people to get enrolled in, in the medical colleges which were run by the government. Most bright people in the society, they got admitted to these medical colleges. By 1960s or 65, many you know brilliant doctors started coming out and they were uh, started to work in either in the government hospitals or started to create their uh, own individual practice. The government was very accommodative like it always is because they wanted the industry to expand before they let the big industry or the big business move in. So uh, there were no rules and regulations. You could open up a clinic either from your home and even open up a nursing home without any problems because they were letting you grow so that one day they can, once you have established the whole thing, then they will uh, usurp your business. Now, how do they do it? More than 90% of Indian healthcare is still in the nursing home category or a single hospital category. It could be a 50 bedded hospital or a 300 bedded hospital, but most of the doctors have one hospital only. Then in the earlier part of the 21st century, the corporate started moving in, in a, on a very small scale. So we had Apollo Hospital, Fortis Hospital, Max Hospital. So all these hospitals started coming up. In the initial years, most of these hospitals were started by the doctors, but slowly the big business started investing in these ventures. And today the stage has come where almost 20% of the top end of the healthcare is now in the hands of the big business. So Fortis Hospital is gone, Columbia Asia Hospital is gone, Care Hospital is gone, Manipal Hospital is gone, Max Hospital is gone. All these hospitals are now in the hands of the big business. So now there are two categories of healthcare in India, one which is owned by the big business and another which is owned by a single doctor or a group of doctors. Now government played its part because uh, we may call it a democracy and Abraham Lincoln might have said something about democracy but here when it comes to healthcare uh, or when it comes to any industry in whether it's a developing country or a developed country to the, today the definition of democracy is the government is by the people of the people but for the big business similarly media is of the people by the big business and for the big business so do not expect either the government or the media to be in support. Neither the public will be in support. So the only way out to fight this menace is to unite and the doctors themselves will have to fight this battle. So what exactly is this battle? Now the initial thing started opening up in the first part of this century when CGHS came and they introduced abysmal rates for healthcare. Now there were some consternations amongst the doctors and uh, you know some people were cribbing about the low rates but ultimately most of the big hospitals, medium hospitals, smaller hospitals, they were in the queue to get empaneled with CGHS, uh, ECHS and then ESI and slowly all the public sector undertakings also moved th to those rates. Then they introduced a thing called NABH and they further introduced, uh, dropped down the rates uh, by 10% for hospitals were non-NABH. So there has been a continuous down spiraling of the prices. Then came Ayushman Yojana which uh, claims to cover 50 crore Indian people and the rates were further dropped. Now the final bombshell is going to come in six months time to a year's time when a unified portal is going to be introduced by the insurance companies. And then all the insured patients uh, will also be treated on the Ayushman rates, thereby making huge profits for the insurance companies. So how does the similarity between the condition of the farmers and the future of the doctors, uh, you know, unfold? When the green revolution uh, took place, then the farmers were encouraged to take loans to buy agricultural equipment, things like tractors and all. And they thought that they would be easily able to repay the EMIs for these loans because they will produce more and they will earn more. But the government, they didn't know that the government is going to control the sale price of their produce. So the government introduced minimum support price, 
which actually was a way of keeping the prices of uh, their services under control and the government had all the tools in its hands so, so when there was a drop in produce due to any weather conditions or uh, lack of rainfall or poor monsoon then the government would import the products from other countries thereby making sure that the farmers do not earn a decent profit and when there was a bumper crop then the government blocked the exports so the farmers would still not get their price so this is how by controlling the sale price of the services and on the other hand making sure that the input costs keep rising now cghs prices are stagnant for the last 20 years ayushman prices have even gone below the cghs prices but imagine in 20 years the wages of most of the healthcare workers would have more than trebled gst has been introduced everything inflation is at almost 8 to 9 percent so everything has become more expensive so your input cost goes on increasing year after year but the final price on which you can sell your services to the consumers is being capped now once this is achieved you were also encouraged to take loans bring in the latest technology and now when you are in that trap where you most of the hospitals would have some or the other kind of loan over their heads now the whole idea is to make the health entire healthcare unproductive non remunerative now how does this help the big business so what these insurance companies would be doing is they will have separate rates for these bigger hospitals which are owned by big businesses uh, from other countries and they will have pathetic rates for the single hospital it may be a 500 bedded hospital situated in varanasi or patna or whichever place so that the medium and the small size hospitals become unproductive and their valuations fall once that is done then these big vultures will swoop in and buy out all your assets whether you have an owned nursing home or it is a leased building or whatever but they, they will be willing to buy out at a reduced price and thereby capture 100% of the healthcare market once that is achieved and you would see the CGHS prices and Ayushman prices and everything would be quadrupled because now the profits will be moving in the hands of the big business and most of the governments, I would say every government on this earth is controlled by these big businesses. There's one thing which is not similar between the farmers and the doctors. When all these machinations were happening, when the prices were being curbed and everything was happening, the farmers could not understand the shenanigans of these big businesses because they were mostly illiterate. Doctors are the brightest segment of our society, but they have not been able to see this looming threat, not because they are illiterate, but because they are overworked. They, once uh, you know they are finished with the patients for the day there is no day left so there is no time for them to think and this is where we bring we are bringing about these videos to make the entire healthcare fraternity aware about these uh, threats uh, which is which are threats to their existence initially the big business were moving very stealthily and slowly but post covid they have increased their pace so you saw Fortis Hospital acquiring Escorts Group and then acquiring a hospital over a period of almost 10 years. But now the entire Fortis Group with its 42 hospitals has been gobbled up by IHH from Malaysia. Then you saw the case of Manipal Hospital buying out Amri Group of Hospitals and Columbia Asia Group of Hospitals. And now Tenemisk of uh, Singapore has bought the entire Manipal group of hospitals, thereby cornering a huge amount of, uh, you know, beds and revenues in terms of, similarly, Max Healthcare was acquired also by venture capitalists. And now you have almost uh, all the top uh, players gone with Apollo and Medanta also in the line. So once this is achieved, the entire top healthcare in the metro towns will be in the hands of big businesses and then they will start moving into tier 2 and tier 3 cities. This won't take them very long, maybe maximum 2 years, 3 years down the line and they would be sweeping all over the country. So once the profitability of the medium sized hospitals or single doctor owned hospitals will nosedive, 
what will happen to the doctors working on the, in those hospitals? Yesterday I was talking to a top neurosurgeon at one of the corporate hospitals in Delhi and he was telling me that currently I earn about 18 to 20 lakh rupees a month and my goal is to earn 40 lakh rupees a month in the next five years. So tell me what should I be doing? And I told him, don't worry brother, within the next five years you will be down to 2 lakh rupees a month. Because once the entire healthcare is in the hands of the big business, they are going to squeeze the doctors working in those hospitals because that is the biggest cost. Almost 30% of a hospital's revenue goes towards paying the wages of the doctors. And once the profitability of the medium-sized hospitals or the single doctor-owned hospitals goes down, then it is quite certain that the doctors working in those hospitals, even the super specialists will come down to the levels of a salary of 1 to 1.5 lakh rupees. The salaries of nurses will come down from almost 20, 25,000 to 10,000 rupees. And uh, an MBBS doctor would not be getting even 10,000, 15,000 or maybe 20,000 rupees because if there is no money to be earned in the business, then how can the people working in that particular industry be paid? Now the title of the video says, that even your future is at threat but you will still not have a begging bowl because just like the government is feeding 80 crore people through its food grain per month free food grain so they will include the healthcare workers including the doctors in that category and you will also be entitled for that uh, you know free food grain so it is time that you wake up now because if you do so one year down the line, I think it would be too late. Thank you. Subscribe to the channel. Keep watching.